Hello world. In mid-May 2025, the headlines read like science fiction. Geoxia and Linus Media Group set world record for pi calculation and announced a press release. In reality, a cluster of 2.2 petabytes of NVMe SSDs has been silently chewing away at pi for seven and a half months straight. When it was all done, they had crunched out 300 trillion digits, a new Guinness world record. To put it mildly, this wasn't your average math lesson. It was a tech spectacle, an office full of rearing drives, a half exhausted YouTube crew in hoodies and a viral video reveal. Spoiler alert, the 300 trillionth digit of pi is Five. Jake Tibai, a Linus Media Group host who normally yokes it up with graphic cards, got on camera to brag that no one had really done it before. With network storage and yet these Kioxius SSDs pumped at 100 plus gigabytes second for months without a single failure. Alex May of Kioxia was equally proud, praising a robustness under endless high intensity workloads. In short, this was marketing meets math, a Guinness title and a demo of corporate hardware. But beyond the press puffery lies a deeper story about why we humans can't resist pushing Pi just a little bit further. From Archimedes' quill on parchment to YouTube studio lights and, of course, AI music bots. The obsession with Pi is ancient. Archimedes of Syracuse gave us the first rigorous approximation by inscribing polygons around a circle. Centuries later, mathematicians built on that. The German-Dutch fence master Ludolf van Solen famously spent 25 years grinding out pi by hand with polygons, ultimately publishing 20 digits in 1596 and extending to 35. He was so proud of these extra digits that the first 35 were engraved on his tombstone in Leiden. If it's any consolidation, by the time he published 20 of them, he had already overshot any practical need. Engineers today only use 16 digits for space missions. In fact, Ludolf's legacy lives on. Pi is sometimes still called the Ludolfin number and his life story is a reminder that calculating pi started as a geeky hobby, not a necessity. A century-by-century -century timeline of pi milestones highlights this relentless climb. In antiquity and the medieval era, incremental advances looked tiny, red line barely budging from Euclid's or Archimedes' bounds. Then, in the 1500s, Ludolf surges. In the 1700s, the calculus generation chips away. Madhaba, Al Kashi, Euler, and with computers, the curve turned vertical in the last few decades. In the late 20th century, our scene shifts from scholars to hackers. Two eccentric brothers, Grigory and David Chudnovsky, exemplify the new breed. The Chudnovsky brothers were on par with James Bond gadget masters. In the USSR in the 70s, they built a DIY supercomputer nicknamed M0 in Grigory's Manhattan partner. By the early 90s, this homemade cluster rigged up in living room boxes and closets had powered Pi to 2 billion decimal places. As the New Yorker quipped, the world's most powerful supercomputers include Grigory Chudnovsky's apartment. Reportedly, it cost them only $70,000 in parts, pocket change compared to the 30 million supercomputers of the era. The brothers even published a new Chudnovsky algorithm for Pi, which underlines many record calculations to this day. By 1994, they've made Pi leap from billions to roughly a trillion places, all from a rundown Upper West Side flat. In other words, back in the 90s, a couple of scruffy genius professors were pushing digits while their building probably still had Phones. The point wasn't practical, nobody uses billions of digits. It was raw human curiosity and the drive to go further than anyone else. As one history notes, future Pi record chasing attempts to calculate Pi to ever greater precision have been driven 
primarily by curiosity about the number itself. And who can blame them? Pi is infinite and partyless. Teasing out its digits is like trying to unspool infinity itself. A tantalizing challenge, would you agree? After Chudnovsky, the baton passed to the digital age. In 1999, Yusumasa Kanada in Japan nudged the count up to 51. 0.5 billion digits. Decades sped by and computing exploded. By 2011, Shigeru Kondo, a Japanese tinkerer, was at 10 trillion on a simple PC. Just eight years later, Google Cloud's Emma Haruka Ivao used thousands of CPUs to smash 31.4 trillion digits on Pi Day 2019, no less. Then 100 trillion in 2022. Google's feat was so big that it made mainstream headlines, a company using cloud service to do a stunt for Pi Day, highlighting how digit chasing became a tech argument. Meanwhile, storage outlets were quietly grinding Pi records. Peter Tripp at a Swiss research institute hit 62.8 trillion digits in 2021. In 2024, a team at storagereview.com one-upped even that, cranking Pi to 202 trillion using a custom rack of SSDs. They bragged about unparalleled capabilities of modern high-performance computing, basically showing off that their raft commodity of NVMe drives and CPUs could outstrip anything prior. Now, Linus Media Group and Kioxia stormed the stage with 300 trillion. Why do companies and influencers care about digits, with NASA only needing 16 digits? Why bother? The answer is human nature. Part of it is sheer wonder. Pi is an irrational beast, and we want to see how far its random string goes. Another part is ego and competition. It feels like a sport, and each new record is a shiny trophy in geeks cabinet. People have always framed it as I climbed the highest mountain or I went beyond where anyone else has gone. Ludo von Solen chased it because it was the Everest of math in his day. Chudnovsky chased it because he could. Linus chased it partly because YouTubers chase everything. It's a statement. We did this. There's also a cinematic drama here. Picture a team eating takeout at midnight surrounded by blinking drives, debating whether to sleep or run another round. It's romantic in a nerdy way. Cassandra-like calculations in the wee hours. Science and media cheer it on. Guinness creates a category, Wyatt covers it with a wink, and we share clips on TikTok of the last digits scrolling by. But cultural feedback loop makes it addictive. When Jake Tyvee ran his Linus clip, fans fired up comments comparing this to Netflix show or asking what's next. Everyone loves a good arms race, even with math. And finally, there is that intangible allure of infinity. We are built with finite brains, yet we keep peeking into the infinite. Counting Pi's digits is a symbolic way to touch eternity. It's both humbling, it never ends, and hubristic. Maybe we'll get one more digit than the previous guy. In the end, as one essay put it, people have always wanted to explore things for their own sake, and a number like Pi is completely fascinating. Meanwhile, not everyone chasing Pi is a laptop case model. Across the world, obsessive hobbies memorize digits. One Guinness record holder has recited over 100,000 digits by heart and even composed art or music from them. NPR once featured a segment on a professor who set some digits to fractal painting. It's pop culture now. There are pie day parades, pies, actual pies, get it? and rap songs about Pi's digits. In fact, an AI on Suno.com, yes, an AI, 
has even whipped up to lo-fi house track, rapping the first 50 digits of Pi in its chorus. If ever a meme was to burn to sum up our obsession, that's it. And if you enjoyed watching this video, make sure to check out this one next. Oh, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in a bite.